Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today. I greatly appreciate you all coming on to episode five of series two of the OJ Show, um, supporting small businesses. Um, so let's start off with Helen and Eddie. Let's introduce yourselves and tell us who you are and what you do. Um, I'm Helen Hoffman. I own a barbershop called um, Watson & Co. I also have a beauty salon called St. Eltan. Uh, my name's Eddie Hoffman. Um, we have Louis William Jewelers on Oscar Street. Uh, we've been in here for about four years. Uh, prior to that, we had a jewellery shop on Church Street. Brilliant. And David, do you want to tell us who you are and what you do? Yeah, hi. Thanks for, uh, thanks for inviting me, Oliver. Um, so I'm David Baines. I'm the leader of St. Helens Borough Council. Um, I'm St. Helens through and through. I grew up in Haydock, live in Windle now, my wife and family. I've been a councillor for uh, seven years and a leader for just over one and it's been quite a busy time as you can imagine with everything going on uh, but I'm delighted to be here and um, to, to be able to talk about uh, such an important subject. Fabulous so let's start off then is obviously Helen and Eddie yourselves have started uh, St. Helen's Independent Business page so do you want to kind of tell us um, what is the reasoning behind the group and, and why? Oh uh, so many reasons to be honest with you I mean what a crazy year that 2020 has been, um, especially for small independent businesses like ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, so we didn't really just want a networking page to advertise businesses and all products and services that you do. We wanted a full support network set in place, didn't we? Yeah. With um, counsellors, um, counselling sessions, people who help with mental health. A lot of um, people are suffering with depression at the time. With um, COVID, you know, it, it's strange for everybody being isolated or businesses being closed or people sh struggling for... It's affected everyone in, in different ways, hasn't it? I think they also felt that individual businesses were struggling to uh, get any help, uh, not necessarily financial help, just support and who to ask, um, what was the best way forward. People obviously were, trying, they were shutting the doors and, and uncertain of the future, so we wanted to try and give each other a bit of a platform that you can advertise your products, you could tell us what you do, um, get some support from other local businesses, um, and, and offer a bit of a, um, a conduit between, you know, sometimes ourselves, like Gary Maddox, who's, who's been amazing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's been very, very good in terms of communicating um, with ourselves, yeah. with, with other small businesses. And I think the idea behind the page was, Tell us about yourself. Um, let, let's support each other. Let's, yeah. let's support each other through this, this crisis. Yeah. So would you say this has been a success out of lockdown then? Yes. Absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. More or less the feedback that we're getting, everyone who's joined the page and the group um, has had business from it. Yes. And we've also said, you know, if you see someone sharing one of their business pages or their products or services and you've used them, leave a positive review. You know, love makes the world go round. And if you've given someone a good service and they, you know, recommend you and then you've used them and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, you know, it's all hand in hand, we're stronger together. I think the other thing that came to mind from, from the page was just how many small businesses there are in St. Helens, how versatile it is. And it's a great thing to see because, you know, you look at Church Square now and a lot of the big multinationals, like Topshop, didn't renew the contracts unfortunately mm -hmm. um, and, and the bigger companies sometimes are pulling away from the small returns but our return is thriving with small independent businesses mm -hmm. which I didn't know which I do know you know it's, it's been great for that. The page just shows us hasn't it businesses we were like oh my god they're in St Helens we didn't even know mm -hmm. so it's encouraged us to shop local as well yeah. you know um, before Covid uh, I'll hold my hands up I was probably one of the worst, worst Christmas presents yeah. shopping I go oh let's go to the track centre or I'll nip Liverpool but this year has really made a focus on shopping local and then using independence rather than, you know, Amazon or big, you know, multinationals. Yeah, 100%. Definitely. So how successful do you think that that page is going to go then? Do you think it's going to, you know, where, where are you kind of seeing, seeing it go? Well, I think what we'd like to do is, I mean, Christmas is, this next two weeks for everybody in retail is just focus on getting your head down getting Christmas done, trying to obviously make as much money as we can for our businesses to go forward next year. However, I'd like to think, or we'd like to think, that next year we could develop this networking group to something a little bit more. Um, you know, whether it means we're doing um, business coffee mornings or, coffee or evenings, maybe get, get the people together informally, 
shared um, ideas. Yeah, um, uh, shared ideas, you know, uh, brainstorm. But also like to think we could probably get let people have like a two minute video of their business on our themselves. page. Yeah. So they could basically say, right, this is this is me, this is what I do, Eddie Hoffman, this is my jewelry shop, we do this, we do that. Two minute promo video um, would help again people understand what other people do. That's where I'd like to see it go. Um, you know, with the support of everybody. Yeah. So, David, what is your views on on the business page? Do you what what do you feel? It's been an amazing project. Yeah, I think I think it's fantastic. Um, I, I was posting on there yesterday about the the business festival, the the, the Christmas market that was at, the, at uh, Sticky Wiki yesterday, which was which was great. Despite the weather, it was great to see such a good turnout. It just shows the strength of uh, of feeling that there is in the community to support independent businesses. I think that people still turned out despite the the bad weather. They wrapped up, they got down there, and they showed support for the many fantastic, or lots of them, uh, independent businesses that took part in that. Um, I think the page is brilliant. I think um, Helen made. A really good point she summed up when she said we're stronger together and whether that is in the community whether it's charities we're talking about whether it's volunteer groups whatever residents or businesses we are strong when we work together and um, that's what's in hands together is all about which I'll, i might talk about later but um that that's i think that's the good thing that's come out of this year it's been such a challenging year for everybody what whatever um, your circumstances or whatever your age wherever you live it's been a really difficult year and the one good thing that's come out of it has been that strength of community spirit, the kindness, the strength that everyone has shown, determined to look after each other and look out for one another. And I think that's what they're doing through the business page, that this helping businesses support themselves, promote themselves, and show people just how much there is in St. Helens that we can be proud of. Yeah, definitely. And I do think 100%. even yesterday, obviously with the Christmas markets at the Sticky Wicket, I... 100% would like to see more of them happening seasonally throughout the year, not just Christmas, because I do think they are so worth it. You know, there's there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that come, whether they are from outside or inside St. Helens, and they come and show their support, which, you know, even whether you're going to buy something or not, if you're going to buy something, amazing. But if you're not, it's just to even to show your support and, you know, talk to people. You might meet someone new or, you know, meet a new business you've never saw, because I know I miss myself, you know, I knew yesterday there was there was businesses there that I never knew was in St Helens or that I'd never met before. So it was nice to to kind of see see the people on on the posts that were there. Um, so yeah, I do. I would like to see more of them happening. Going to go first, Hannah. Well, um, I mean, there's shopping on the, the Saturday um, program. I'd like to see it more often. Um, you know, a Saturday is a, a, a good day to shop. It's a, it's a busy shopping day. Um, it's certainly busy for um, my barber shop and my beauty salon. You know, people going out to restaurants, groups, even visiting family over the weekend, they'll tend to get groomed um, before they go and see the loved ones. So whether that's gents getting the hair cut and old ladies having spray tans and nails and um, whichever. So Saturday for me is a good day. We should push it more. Yeah, I absolutely agree. We find that the majority of our couples who are shopping for things like wedding rings, engagement rings, will come in on Saturday. I think Saturday is still seen as the main shopping day um, in St. Helens, I should say. Um, but, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I love anything that's going to push independence, anything that's going to push clients uh, through our doors or into our town. I, I, one of the things that I, I'd like to I'd like, try and focus on next year is through uh, obviously ourselves collectively on the council to work, work on dwell time. It's great to get people in St. Helens, but we need to keep them in St. Helens. And I think the retail offer we've got just needs to be improved, which I'm sure the council's working really hard to attract new tenants. Uh, albeit it's been a very difficult year this year to attract anybody due to the lockdown situation. But that, that small business sadly is fantastic. The more we can push small businesses, um, so I do think they're the ones that are going to get left over in small towns. These are small independent rather than multinationals. The multinationals are pulling out of small towns um, as, they, as they start to reduce the, the retail offer. Unfortunately, online shopping has a lot to do with that as well, which we have no control over. So the more that we can group together in St. Helens and, and our retail offer can be great, um, and Small Business Saturday is part of that, um, I'm all for it, and I'll get behind it 100%. Yeah, and um, my two um, salons, and I'm, I'm very fortunate because same time with the council, I've put two free car parks. I have one next door to my barber's and one over the road. And I think free parking 
does help. Like I say, I'm very fortunate, I'm very lucky for that. And it does make a big difference having three park on near your business. So and I'm one of the, the lucky ones. Yeah, and touching on the sorry, the shop local thing. I know we're talking about small business Saturday, but I think the council a few years ago around the shop local be seen local and that was for me a great a great project and it was a great sort of hashtag thing and I think if we get back to something like that again um, within the local community about shopping local being seen local um, yeah the have people are amazing I've been here 20 years now to retail I've, got, I've made so many friends I've got so many clients who come back to me uh, they're very loyal people uh, and they like shopping local I think they like spending local uh, and, and I see that weekly daily uh, so the so more we can push, sorry, small Saturday, I know I'm going off on tangent a little bit, but it, it, it encompasses small businesses, it encompasses our retail offer. So excellent for me. <laughs> so, David, what would you say your uh, views are on how the council have kind of helped small businesses then um, with the Small Business Saturday and shopping locally? Well, I think just first what I'd say is that um, Eddie mentioned it before, about the when you're talking about the future of the high street and town centres in general, small businesses and independents are, are the, they are the future because the larger retailers they either want to go to retail parks or they go into the big cities or they go into places like the trafford center liverpool one the mm -hmm. towns like St. Helens, wigan warrington etc are never going to not going to be able to compete within the long term now St. Helens is a is a long way behind wigan and warrington we're, we're oh, having to do now to our town center what wigan and warrington have spent the last 20 years doing so we're a bit behind the curve um and i'm well aware of that with we're, we're, we're on the front now with the town deal board and our regional and like that. but whatever the town centre looks like in the future, all independent businesses will probably be at the centre of that. If there's a retail offer to be had in the town centre, it'll be built around businesses like Eddie's and Helen's and others mm -hmm. that were that they're kind of at the Ruskin yesterday. Um, in terms of what the council's doing, so we launched a shop local and keep it in the borough campaign a couple of weeks ago. Um, to promote small business Saturday, but not just small business Saturday, encouraging people to shop local all over Christmas. They've had a, a really tough year. Um, I think small independent businesses have had, uh, you know, especially in hospitality and leisure, but also retail have had a really tough year in terms of the, the business, probably more so than any other sector, because they've not been able to open for much of the year and the support they've had from central government and others has not been what it should have been. So we really need to, to give them our support, give them our custom in the next few weeks. And it's not just about tweeting or sharing things on Facebook. Small businesses need our money. They need us to, to spend our cash there. And, uh, you know, if you can keep our pounds local, it all gets reinvested back in the local economy, goes to local people who were, who were running these fantastic businesses, all gets reinvested here. So it's, it's the right thing to do. And we'll certainly do what we can as a council to support them. What help and support is out there for small businesses then from the council? Okay, so we've got, uh, I think Eddie and, and Helen mentioned Gary before. Gary Maddock, who's the town centre manager for the council. He's an absolute superstar. I wish we had a thousand of them. If we could, if we could clone him, we'd be yeah. doing it all right. <laughs> Fantastic, Gary. He, he, he understands small businesses. I think he, he runs a couple himself. He, he knows what what is needed. He knows what we, what we have to do. He knows how to how to um, how to deal with those those queries that we get from businesses all the time. And he understands how important they are. So we've got Gary. We've got a small team of business support uh, staff. We've just appointed, well, I'll say just, it was in September now, but a new cabinet member for business and skills, uh, Kate Rucott, who's going to be working with partners such as the Chamber and the uh, Liverpool City region and the local LEP, who, who we can't uh, forget. We need to look more regionally at attracting business and investment in, into uh, the borough. So we've got people like that who are focusing on it uh, full time. In terms of what we've been doing uh, all this year to support business the best we can, we've not got everything right. You know, we're all human, we'll make mistakes, and it's been a really challenging year. We've, we've had to focus on our core business, keeping essential services running all year. But in addition to doing that, which we've done really well um, we've also managed to uh, set up a 40 million local business uh, grant support scheme that was set up just here in the Liverpool city region um, for hospitality and leisure venues hit when we went into the original tier three lockdown then we secured an extra 30 million from government business support a couple of weeks ago we announced um, some extra funding from that pot, original 40 million pot for those who'd been left behind so far. So sole traders who don't have a premises, for example, they could apply for that. The deadline for that closed on Friday. We've had lots of applications. So hopefully lots of people will be able to, to help from that. And throughout the year as well, licensing and enforcement have been working with and supporting businesses uh, to change their use because obviously hospitality have been pushed around. 
all year by by the regulations they've been able to serve food not serve food serve drinks not serve drinks and licensing and enforcement working with them all year to to do that and to issue uh, payment licenses to help them uh, expand the business in in that way um and you know i think we've got the like the latest figures i saw were 94 percent um, compliance from local businesses so I just want to thank all the local hospitality and leisure businesses um, for the role that they're playing it's in real circumstances when they're worrying about the livelihoods and the livelihoods of the staff I think our local businesses have really stepped up and done a fantastic job and it's the role of the council to enable that to support that it's not the role of the council to do everything for everyone we, we can't do that and nor should we there are people in the community including businesses who can do things much better than the council ever could it's the council's role to support it's the council's role to enable and that's what we're working to do amazing so then in terms of covid obviously we've seen that the council of um, uh, a lot of people are still working from home so how have the council adapted to uh, a global pandemic Yes, uh, to a lot of council staff who are office-based are currently still working from home. Obviously, a, a lot of council staff are frontline workers, so they're out in the community. They're social workers, they're school staff, they're collecting waste and recycling, they're fixing highways, they're tending to landscapes, all that sort of stuff. You know, over, I think it's about 700 services the council provides and a lot of front-facing out there, meeting the community and out in the community. But a lot of staff are working from home. Um, it's um, agile working, used to be called hot desking, it's now called agile working. So we're looking at rationalising the council estate. Um, but as I said earlier, throughout the year, our, our core business has been delivering essential services, very vulnerable residents, uh, making sure schools and social care and things like that are all being provided because that's what people have, have had to lean on this year. Um, providing business support and employment support where we can, for example, through the Ways to Work scheme. Um, and at the same time, we've also welcomed a new chief executive, new assistant chief executive, other new senior officers. We, we've currently got now an executive leadership team at the council um, who haven't met each other in person because they've been all working remotely since March. Um, and they've, they've started at various points. So it, it has been a challenging time. I mean, we've shown what can be done in difficult circumstances. And despite all the challenges we've faced, um, I think we, we have done a lot of good work. I know what people want to see is delivery and, and residents like me, like all of us on this call, we want to see physical change in the town centre in particular, in St. Thomas Town Centre and Earlstown Town Centre. We want to see that because that, that will inspire confidence it'll let people know that things are changing things are on the up and that will attract new businesses and so on yeah. um, and we're working on that and i think 2021 we will start to see a, lo a lot of progress on that but yeah it's, it's been such a difficult year um as i said before the one good thing that's come out has been that strength of community spirit and kindness and strength and the way everyone's come together like the business community has through this page and other things um, and other things together banner which we're, we're keeping that state to stay and telling together um that's the ethos that the council are going to operate under from now on we're here to enable and to support and to bring people together we're not here to do everything because we can't we haven't got the funds or the means to, to do it as we want to but that no excuse that doesn't mean that we can but sometimes and that's what we're going to do from now on yeah i mean so what is the next steps for st helens together then what what kind of next things are there coming up so early in the year we're going to be unveiling a borough strategy it's a 10-year borough strategy um for our priorities for for the borough and for the council there was a public consultation which ha uh, occurred over the summer and, and lots of different people were consulted on that and there were um, events in across the borough where people contribute their views. and i've seen the the draft of the borough strategy and it's, it's a really exciting document um and that will set out a bit like um i don't people might not be familiar with it but we're going to have a thing called the deal and it's basically um it's a contract between the council and residents and businesses and so on and it says we'll do this you do that if we all play our part our place will be a better place to live work and, and enjoy yourself so that's what we're aiming for um it's as i say this intelligence together thing is gonna it's gonna underpin everything we do as a council um, and i think if we can if we can build on that support the voluntary sector support residents support businesses together as helen said right at the start we are stronger uh, so that's what we're aiming for Amazing. Just to add to that, Oliver, if that's okay, I'm David. And myself and Helen, we felt we uh, the service we got from the council when we first went into lockdown was amazing. The turnaround in terms of the grants getting paid 
was amazing. And it was a simple process of phone and phone and emailing your form over. Um, so I congratulate him on that because yeah. he did turn the money around really quickly and it, and it was a worry in time for us all. So there's a lot of people who are quick to jump on the bandwagon of saying the council don't do enough or they didn't, don't, they're not quick enough. But we, it gave us a lot of peace of mind. To it. the first lockdown, yeah. absolutely. Like our um, accountants is Ms. Bill and Garrett in Liverpool and they couldn't believe how quick St. Helens Council obtained the first lot of grants around quickly because they were like, mainly the, most of their businesses are in Liverpool. Yeah. And they were like, no, they were like way behind. So St. Helens Council, first lot of grants on the board, Absolutely. wasn't they? And it was more worrying than the second lockdown because we'd never been through a lockdown before. We were all like, oh, you know, it, 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 well, didn't know what to do, did we? Yeah. Um, and again, Gary Maddox, amazing. You know, he, he goes the extra mile, he gives us personal number. I've, I've nearly been crying down the yeah. phone, so I'm about, you know. What are you in about the two businesses? Are they going to close and they're going to survive? Um, so, yeah, and I've got her in. In the right places. Yeah, yeah. Thumbs up. <laughs> That's good to know. Thank you. I just want to thank you, Oliver, for what you're doing. Um, it, you, it's incredible. You're, you're a fantastic example to not just young people, but everyone. People, you know, you inspire me. Uh, you inspire everyone that knows you. So I just want to thank you. And thank you for, uh, for inviting me to be part of this as well. Really appreciate it. Amazing, no worries. Thank you so much for, for, for joining us and you know telling us your views on supporting small businesses because that's what we're all about. Anytime, and, and good luck to Eddie and Helen with the page and everything. Thank you, <laughs> Thank Thank you. you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. All the best. So, Helen, how has um, COVID affected the barbers and obviously the whole industry, really? Well, um, you know, I'm trying to stay positive <laughs> for this, but the reality is, um, at first it was, you've got to have PPE to spend over a thousand pounds on fit and shop of PPE, which consists of plastic screens between each chair, um, plastic screens around the till and reception desk, hand sanitizer, um, and get a machine to take people's temperature, masks for all customers, the advisors for all staff and mask for staff, gloves if people wanted gloves, disposable gowns for each customer, which could only be used once, as also the mask could only be used once, and the gloves and disposable aprons for myself and my staff um, to keep us all safe. So we've done all that, and then they said, no, we're still going to have to close yet. So my biggest thing was, well, if PPE is safe for the NHS and PPE is good enough for NHS staff to use. Why can't myself, barbers, beauticians also use PPE and carry on working? I've always worked. Um, and it was it was hard, wasn't it? You know, to it, it get your head around it. It's uncertainty, isn't it? It, it, it certainly is. It was, it, it was the unknown. So I just had to close. I had to, you know, fail over staff. I had to take loans out to pay for it. Not just myself, I've got many friends in similar businesses to mine that I had to take out loans and grants to just survive. Um, you know, certain landlords still make you pay rent even though your business is closed. Where does that money come from? You know, so it was a, a trying time for beauticians and barbers and um, people in close contact where, you know, it was a time we all had to try and think outside the box, think how could you, how, how, how can I work through this? And the reality is, if you're a barber or a musician, you can't put hair online. You can't, you know, do Botox or Brazilian beauty lifts online. So we have no alternative but to just close. However, the jewellers, you could adapt. You know. Yeah, I mean, don't be wrong, the first lockdown, very similar to Helen, um, we were sort of forced to close. And Nervous about our future, nervous about what was going to happen. 12 weeks shut down. Uh, we came back to work on the 15th of June uh, to an unknown uh, quantity of what was going to happen customer wise. Again, we had to PPA our shop out um, and provide a lot of free equipment to our clients entering our store, which was the right thing to do, uh, but still, it was the unknown. As the second lockdown came, uh, we were getting a lot of inquiries on our webpage. Uh, a lot of inquiries through Facebook, 
uh, Instagram uh, social media platform. So we did manage to do click and collect. So we sort of adapted to the situation. And again, it was done by appointment only where you could collect your parcel or we could deliver it to your door or post it to you. Uh, we just had to adapt to the situation as best we could. Uh, but in then the first three months when we closed, I mean, the grant was wonderful um, and it helped, but it didn't replace my turnover. Uh, so that was tough. But we've all, we're ever the optimist. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pull it back next year. <laughs> um, so kind of how have you, and we've come out of lockdown then, how have you come back? Obviously you've, you've used PPE and obviously all the government guidelines, but in terms of uh, sales and turnover, what, you know, have you gone more online with sales? You know, Helen, how have you kind of um, come out of lockdown and, and, and changed the way that, you know, or have you changed the way that you kind of approach clients and customers? Um, we were still um, struggling, to be honest with you, um, because a lot of people are scared of COVID and, and right, so, you know, it is out there and we do expect it. Um, we, are, we still have our full PPE in. But, you know, you're down roughly about 50% of the clients. It's okay them opening books, but if they're not, if they're saying, for example, you can't go and visit your grandma, and you can't really go for a, a drink in a pub, or you can't really do this, and you can't really do that, but these facilities are open, you know, people normally come to me, if, if they are going to visit grandma, or if they are going out the pub with the lads, or, you know, the girls are going out with partners and they want the nails done or whatever. So with them, we've said, Helen, you can open your beauty salon and you can open your barbers with your full PPE. It's still not quite enough. I need hospitality to get to normal. I need you to be able to visit family and friends. Because without that, hospitality can get back to normal. And without you visiting people, people are more relaxed about not getting the hair done or not getting the nails done or not having a Brazilian booty lift because no one's going to see the booty because it's not going anywhere. Yeah. And so I need... Oh, go on. I was just going to say, I need everything to get back to normal. I have thing. Yeah. And Eddie, have you gone on more, more online then and things? How have you kind of changed? Well, I mean, we've got, we've got quite a good Facebook page, quite a good Instagram page. So it, I found I've been busier since I came back. In some respects, I think a lot of people have had disposable income. I think a lot of people have had refunds on holidays and then realised they're not going to be able to get away again. So people have been investing in, in quality items uh, or treating themselves, shall we say. So for me, it's not actually been that bad. I've been I've probably gone against the trend a little bit there by saying that. Although we haven't sold a wedding ring since February because we were a very busy wedding ring shop. But because people had to postpone the weddings and move them a year on. Uh, wedding ring sales have been, have been very quiet, but overall, it's been a, it's been a good sort of time since we came back in June. I'm happy if I can be happy in in a in a COVID world. <laughs> yeah. So we have we have, we have, let me say we've got to adapt. We have yeah. adapted, and we've done lots of different things. We've taught ourselves in different ways um, to to hopefully get people to come to the shop. You know, stay local. Yeah, definitely. I think I think it, we are we are all about staying local and obviously sometimes together, like David said, and, and shopping local for Christmas especially, and then going into the new year doing the same and supporting all of the businesses. So I will just like to say that thank you so much to both of you for coming on. I do greatly appreciate you coming on, telling us um, about the business page and how people can get involved. So I can put all the contact details in the description um, so everyone can share and go and take a look. Um, so if there is anything, do you have anything else to add? No, uh, thank you for inviting us. It's thank been you. an absolute pleasure. I'm glad to be in on the infancy of the big OJ show. <laughs> it can only get better and better. Absolutely. And better. Um, certainly. Well, thank you so much. And, um, and I'll be in touch soon. Yeah, look forward to it. Bye. 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 Bye.